Salam everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Lango Go Genesis. This guy has a built-in eSIM card, it has a 2200 milliamp battery, a 3.1 inch display, 8 gigs of RAM, and a quad-core 64-bit processor made by MediaTek. A lot of things that you normally would find in a smartphone, but this is all in a translator that is meant to work around the world. It has a built-in eSIM that's active and you can actually connect to it wherever you are to translate to almost up to 95 languages. This is TK, let's go ahead and check out the Lango Go Genesis. here we have it. The box is pretty simple, just laying GoGo Genesis AI translator inside. And once we open up the box, we have the instruction manual, a SIM ejection tool to be able to use your own SIM card. Now keep in mind, this does have an eSIM and it also has this uh, lanyard right there. It does have an eSIM built in and that one's automatically uh, activated. But if you do want to use, let's say your own SIM card, just keep in mind, it doesn't use the smallest one. That's not the nano SIM. So make sure that when you're opening up your uh, new SIM card, you get the right size in here and use the adapter for it. And once you're done, you can put it in there and then use it uh, directly. We have an initiation button here for translation that's on the right side. On the left side, we have the volume rocker button as well as a power button. So it's screen on and screen off. Let's put it right there. The display that we have in front of us is a 3.1 inch display. Uh, we do have eight gigs of RAM, MTK 1.5 gigahertz uh, processor here. It's a quad core 64 bit one. Uh, we also have uh, basically eight gigs of RAM. And as I mentioned with the battery, it's a 2200 milliamp battery that's charged using USB-C, which is really, really nice, especially in 2019, because most of our other devices are USB-C compliant. So I just have to use the same cable that I have to worry about bringing in with us. Although they do include a USB-C to USB type A cable in here in case you need that. Uh, we have two big speakers on the back as well as four microphones, two on the back, two on the front, and of course an LED light to indicate what we're working. Now you could probably already see there it says eSIM and it actually is activated as well as Wi-Fi. Um, and I'll go through and explain to you some of the main functionalities that we have here in a second. Now looking over the actual UI, we have a couple of options when you first turn it on. You have translation, we have Yuri, as well as the ability of going into the settings. Uh, we'll get into the translation, but the short answer is uh, essentially this is where you're interacting with it as far as translation. You can select your languages from the bottom, as well as having a standard translation, which using the button, or you can have it in a conversation mode, and that initiates the automatic mode, which means it's listening at all times, and it'll basically listen to both languages selected, whatever two languages you have selected from the first option in here. Uh, currently, I have English and Lebanese uh, Arabic, and I'll explain to you why I specifically picked that one. And it actually does have a, a, quite a long list of uh, languages that you're able to pick from. And of course, you can search from if you wanted to be able to access it that way. Uh, go ahead and say done and then we'll swipe back. And uh, we do have Yuri here. This is kind of like their own little assistant. You can ask it a few questions as far as like uh, exchange rate information, weather, uh, local restaurants, as well as also turning on the hotspot using voice. Uh, it's not intended to be an assistant similar to the one we have on our phones, but it's definitely something that inter interacts with the things that you would need when you're traveling in a country that you don't speak, uh, the language for, of course. Uh, swiping to the right, we have access to the hotspot functionality. Again, this has a built-in international hotspot. It is a subscription-based service, so it means whenever you do get into another country, you don't have to buy a local SIM card or anything. You just activate the service and you're able to use it. You also have the ability of using the global Wi-Fi functionality, and it'll give you access to the list and the packages that you're able to pick up from. Uh, conversely, I am connected on the eSIM right now, as well as Wi-Fi at my home, and I'm able to basically go outside and turn off Wi-Fi, and you can do so here under the Wi-Fi setting, and of course, customize it and put in your own password. Uh, system messages are just generally messages sent from the developers. Uh, generally, they come in Chinese though, so I'm not sure why, but overall, nothing really in here for me. Going into the settings, we have the ability of setting up the brightness, the volume, system language, of course. It does by default come as English, and you have the ability of customizing it to French, Dutch, Spanish, and I'm assuming Chinese and what does look like kind of Korean at the bottom here. And of course, we have the text size configuration here, as well as uh, voice speech. Right now, it's set up to be female. You can set it up to be male if you'd like. Um, online upgrade is their update process. Uh, so if you click that, if there was an update, you'll be able to update it there. Sleep is just the normal sleep process that you have on your, song, on your Android phone. Uh, you just basically set it to be a one minute or 10 seconds or 30 seconds. Um, we have, of course, uh, export translation records. It gives us the ability of using either an email, but we can put that in and it'll send it, or you can use a QR code and it'll basically beam it over to a smartphone using the QR code in a PDF format. And it basically gives you the entire conversation. You are able to clear the history of the conversation as well as basically transfer it in case you want to do that. Um, of course, about just takes you in, it gives you more information about the actual device, the model number, serial number, version number for the software. And last but not least, this is also where, be where if you want to reset it. We're going back into the actual translation and the AI functionality. Uh, as I shared with you guys, we have the options here of going standard translation and conversation. What I like about this is the fact that when you're selecting your languages, you don't know, you don't, you don't have just one language per dialect. 
And I mean by that is in Arabic. You notice right there, we have Arabic from Algeria, uh, Bahrain, Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, which is what I have selected, Morocco, Oman, Qatar, um, Saudi Arabia, of course, the state of uh, Palestine. Uh, this is the, all of these countries speak Arabic in a slightly different dialect. And this is actually tuned in to work with those things. And of course, we can scroll down, we can get different languages, we can go to Dutch, Danish, Japanese, uh, English in India, English in Ghana, English in Canada, as well as English in Ireland. So we have English in uh, Kenya, New Zealand, Nigeria. As we know, English is spoken in many, many countries, but it does actually change as far as the actual dialect, as well as French between Canada and France, because those are actually two separate languages with different they're very similar, but they have a lot of different meanings to different words. Um, and if you've ever spoken language, as they've spoken regular French in Canada, you learn it very, very quickly. Uh, of course, we have German, Greek, other things. And you can, of course, like I said, the list is extremely long. Now for the translation, we'll go ahead and go in here and we're gonna go ahead and pick up a few languages real quick. So we're gonna start off with English to Arabic and we'll see how the translation works there. I'm trying to find a building uh, that has a big uh, tree symbol on it. It's actually pretty good. Uh, it's translated exactly the same way to what, it, what I meant. I'm looking for a building in, uh, that has a big tree symbol on top of it, which essentially is Rams Shajra Kabir Ali, which is very, very nice. Let's try another one. Kif halak al ya khayy? How are you today, brother? And again, uh, this is more Lebanese than, than Arabic. Kif uh, halak? Uh, would have been Arabic uh, traditional. Lebanese would be and it did actually pick it up and not only that it also picked up the, the actual punctuation that I would like. Uh, let's go ahead and switch over to uh, not Arabic Algerian. Let's go switch over to Japanese. That's also something I was always worried uh, concerned about how it would work. So let's go ahead and bring it over here. How are you today brother? Now you can hear it very clearly and I'm hoping you guys can let me know in the comments below if this is actually translating correctly or not. Um, I'll go ahead and go back to translation and I'm gonna go ahead and pick another language that I actually know how to speak. So we'll go ahead and switch over to French, but we're gonna pick out French, uh, Paris French or the traditional French. Good morning, I'm trying to get a taxi to go to the Eiffel Tower today. Can you help me? So translated exactly what it is. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm trying to. Uh, I want to take a taxi pour aller à la tour, to go to the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Not only did it translate it, it conjugated it correctly. Uh, as the French uh, translation is actually much much better. Um, later on today, I would like to have lunch with you if you're available. Can you let me know? Perfect, perfect translation, exactly. And I, I really love the fact that it's just easy and it's fast and it's responsive right away. Go ahead and say basically, I'm a Lebanese traveler from Lebanon going to Paris. And I'll go ahead and basically use the translation here. I'm how will fetish ala matam bibia at el cine? Fikit seedne? J'essaie de chercher un restaurant qui vend de la nourriture chinoise pour vous aider. So translated correctly, with the exception of the end, uh, it says pour vous aider, which, as opposed to saying pouvez-vous m'aider, which means can you help me. Uh, but it does actually, the message does translate well. So again, I'm jumping from Arabic to French. So these are two languages that generally, you know, if you live in the US, you're probably not gonna use this exact translation method, but uh, it definitely is very nice. We're gonna go to Spanish, Honduras Spanish, and we're gonna go ahead and switch over conversation. And we're gonna say, Good morning, my friend. I'm trying to uh, see if you have some time this afternoon for us to have lunch. Buenos días, mi amigo. Estoy tratando de ver si usted tiene algún tiempo esta tarde para nosotros para almorzar. So there's also the timing that you have to kind of get used to learning um, when you're using the translation method. Because it does have to pick up between the two languages, you have to give it a second for it to finish translation and then jump into the other one. Uh, again, the language and the translation works really, really well. And again, keep in mind, you don't have to be on Wi-Fi for me for at home. I'm using Wi-Fi because I don't want to use uh, the uh, eSIM option. As I noticed right there, my signal here in the office is actually very low. Uh, you can turn it off and then just use eSIM when you're traveling and it'll work exactly the same way. It is covering you up to two years of free service 
service with the eSIM for translation only, meaning it will work for translation, but then as far as the ability of using hotspot or even global Wi-Fi, you do need to subscribe to these services. And you can mention right there, these are the different options here. This is by default what it is. Um, it does not work unless you're transfer, you know, you're transferring data there. And it is limited in quantity as far as gigabytes of data that you're getting there. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you do still have the ability of using a local SIM, just cellular network, and then make sure you change it to external SIM so that it uses the data from there as opposed to your eSIM when you're translating. I'm pretty sure the first thing you guys are considering right now is like TK. What makes the Langogo Genesis so much more special than any, any of the other options that we have on the market? Uh, even comparing it to the free services that we get, let's say Google Translate, uh, Microsoft Translate, or even Samsung Translator. There's a couple of things you want to keep in mind. A. Uh, for actually, first one is language, and that's a little bit more unique here. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, especially even the specific services that we're talking about, like the free ones, they generally lump up languages as one category. An example would be English, French, and Arabic. Uh, the Arabic language has so many dialects that actually are being adhered here, like Lebanese, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, or uh, Oman, Egyptian. All of these languages speak Arabic, but they speak it in a different dialect. Um, even French, when we talk about French, there's not just one French language. There's Parisian French, which most of us know, and then there's Canadian French, which is also slightly different than what we get from uh, the Parisian French. Now, can they understand each other? Yes. Does it actually uh, translate it the exact same way? That's where the differences happen, and that's where Langogo exceeds. Uh, the second thing I want to talk to you guys about is connectivity and getting access to those free services that are great when you're tr when you're actually using them in the U.S. Because when you're considering using Google Translate or any of the other translating services outside of the U.S., connectivity is the main thing that you're always going to forget about. And the reason behind that is your smartphone that you're using right now, the one that has those free services on, work great in the U.S. on your dedicated carrier, especially if you have a, let's say, a branded phone, meaning a phone that is locked to only work with T-Mobile or only work with Verizon, AT&T, or Sprint. These devices won't work outside of the US without you paying an international fee to your carrier to give you access to it. So that's one thing. If you decide to, let's say, well, you know what, I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to actually uh, just go ahead and take my phone with me. Um, what can I do? Well, then you need to unlock your phone. And that's something that you need to do with your carrier. And they may or may not allow you to do it, depending on how long you've had that phone or how long you've been with them as an actual subscriber. Uh, to top that off, that when you do get to a local country and you're deciding to use a local SIM, uh, using that may not necessarily be the easiest thing, as you generally also have to configure the APNs. And those are the little settings within the actual uh, phone that allows it to actually get the 4G or the high-speed connections on those specific carriers. That's where Langogo Genesis comes in, and it actually offers us a lot of things that are very unique. It makes the travel process, as far as translation, very simple. It has a built-in SIM card, an eSIM, and you can use a local SIM card in there. Um, it has a built-in 2200 milliamp battery that enables us to have it as a Wi-Fi hotspot or even connect it to other Wi-Fis. It does support USB-C, it has really loud speakers, a very clear display, a lot of languages built into this, and as well the ability of having automatic translation or just standard push-to-talk functionality. Now keep in mind, I do have a coupon for you guys for $10 off uh, if you'd like to pick it up next to the Amazon link. Um, and as far as I remember currently, they were running a 30% or $30 coupon. Um, if it's not there on their site, make sure you come back and pick up that coupon from me and then you'll be able to save $10 on your next order. Um, is it a little bit overpriced? Uh, it's a little bit hard to justify and explain. The fact of the matter is it includes a two-year service built into it. That's something that you don't get with other people. So the eSIM that comes with it is activated and it's ready for you to use and you don't have to worry about it. And you can add other services when you're traveling without having to worry about, you know, do I need to pick up a local SIM or whatever. So it makes things very easy and it does actually a really good job in translation. Thank you very much to Langogo and Gen obviously for letting me check out the Genesis and uh, let me know again in the comments below what do you guys think. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next video.